Thank you very much. I'm Ton Overbeke, the CEO of Vitestro. And today I'm going to tell you everything about the future of blood drawing. So, blood drawing is the most commonly performed invasive procedure in the world. Over two and a half million samples are collected each day, which is over one billion samples in the US and Western Europe alone every year. And then 70% of the clinical decision making is based on blood. So although this procedure is from critical importance, it lacked innovation for the last centuries. If we look at the, uh, the errors that are made in the um, sample collection procedure, so basically from the test request to the results that are reporting to the patient, we can see that seven, 60 to 70 percent of the errors or occur in the pre-analytical phase. And that is because the blood, blood drawing is the only step in the whole procedure that's not automated. It's still done manually, and that is very error prone. The next problem is that we do not have sufficient people to do the actual blood drawing. So we see that there is a huge staff shortages. It's not only in Europe and, U it's in Europe and in the US. So in Europe, 85% of the healthcare employers and specifically the phlebotomist face staff shortages. And in the US, uh, we see that there's a high turnover on getting those phlebotomies, phlebotomists. And this trend is worsening because we have an aging population. And at the same time, uh, we see that there are less people. And so first of all, there's more tests required. And secondly, there's less people that can actually perform the blood drawing. We have seen that robotics can help us in healthcare. And that's why we will revolutionize the uh, blood drawing collection. So please meet our device. Um, it can fully autonomously perform the procedure. So basically, the patient puts his arm in the device, presses the start button. The device picks up a new needle, picks up a new bandage, goes to the arm of the patient, looks where the veins are located in the arm of the patient, determines where to puncture the patient, fills the blood tubes, and then um, applies a bandage on the arm of the patient. And that's all done autonomously by our device. So where are we actually in this transformation? And what are we transforming? So first of all, um, we will increase the capacity and we will also increase the reliability of the capacity. So you can imagine that if a phlebotomist is ill, it results in long waiting lines. That's not the case with our device. Secondly, we reduce the staff shortages, so one person can supervise several devices at the same time. Then we can improve the quality and we can increase standardization. So if we, for example, look at the quality of blood hemolysis, we see that our hemolysis rates are significantly lower than uh, when the blood is taken manually, which, is, uh, which really improves the blood. And then, there are fourthly, um, we will enhance patient satisfaction. And I will go get back to that in a bit to support it with clinical data. So we have a massive market that we're going after. It's a five to 10 billion market. And we will take the following approach. So first of all, we focus on the Netherlands and Denmark, which is a hundred million market. Then we expand in Europe and have a pre-launch in the US, which is a billion market. Expand in the US in 2027 and then work on next generation devices, which will enable us an, uh, to open another three to seven billion market. Um, our op uh, we offer a flexible operating model consisting of two parts. So first of all, we have an upfront investment. So it's basically the CAPEX part. We try to keep that as low as possible. And then next to that, we have a well pay as you go. So um, it's first of all a fee that we charge per blood draw, but also an annual maintenance fee, which is all OPEX based. So we have been advancing rapidly to our vision. So where are we now in our journey? So we conducted over 3,000 blood draws with our device to date. And our first time success rate is remarkable. If we look at the first time success rate of a human, we see that it can be as low as 80 to 89%. And in some cases, it's uh, 93 to 97%. We are on the upper side of that range with a 95 to 96% success rate. Then we also demonstrated 
that patients really want to use the device. So we have a high patient acceptance because eventually you're going to place your arm in a device that can automatically insert a needle in your arm, right? So we, after doing the trials and patients, uh, we did randomized trials, we asked patients, okay, so how was, how was your experience in terms of pain with the device? We see that 46% of the patient experience less or far less pain uh, with our device than with a manual blood draw, and 43% said it was comparable. And if you ask patients, is this method of blood drawing going forward acceptable to you? Then we saw that 92% of the patients said it was acceptable to them, um, and it was only a small percentage that was neutral. We have used this data and provided to the notified body, and we received CE mark two months ago, which we're very proud of. So how are we going to the market? So we will launch first in Europe. Um, we will start, like I said before, in the Netherlands and in Denmark. We already sold our first 10 devices to our first four customers, and we're going to place those device devices in the next six to nine months at our customers. And we have an active pipeline in Europe uh, for, for hundreds of devices that we can sell to customers where we're going after right now. Then, in terms of US, we are laying the foundation uh, for early commercialization. So we are currently engaging with uh, leading US hospitals to have clinical collaborations with them. We are targeting to do our FDA submission mid next year. So we are already did uh, four different QSIPs to understand the feedback of the FDA, and we now prepare uh, our uh, filings to, uh, to well, submit our de novo next year. Um, and uh, we started to build our US team. So we have already hired our first team, first person in the US, and we're now looking for a head of commercialization in the US. We have a very experienced leadership team, um, and on our board is Fred Moll. So Fred is the uh, co-founder of uh, Intuitive Surgical uh, and uh, well, well known from the Da Vinci robot, um, and he has also uh, well uh, worked on Oris and a couple of other like medical robotics. He's really the medical robot robotics guy, um, and we have a lot of experience in the team to uh, build this company going forward. To date, we raised 50 million US dollars. 40 of that is equity, uh, 10 of that is uh, non-dilutive funding, and we are looking for the right partner to join us uh, in our journey. Uh, and we would like to raise a 60 to 70 million dollar round, our Series B round. So what are we going to do with this money? So first of all, so we would like, like to achieve three different milestones. First of all, we would like to hand in our de novo submission and uh, get the de novo grant, so get FDA clearance. Then we would like to scale in Europe to 100 to 150 devices and install them in the, in the field with a potential of another like uh, 100 devices uh, for potential lab chains that are going to join us. And then we will start with the in initial commercialization in the US. In addition, we will, be, we will, we will get, get ready to scale commercially, both in Europe and the US. So we're going to build a commercial organization in the US, and we're going to pu publish, together with leading US hospitals, uh, data on our device. We will validate our sales and service models um, in Europe, and uh, we will work on a next generation products and continue to file distinct new patents families. Thank you very much.